What's up guys, Jake from Mac Kite here today with a review on the F1 2022 Bandit. So the Bandit right here is on its 15th season and they haven't changed the name, that's pretty awesome. It means this kite has a lot of clout, it's something they stand behind and it's for a good reason. I finally got the chance to ride this a little bit last year uh, and then this year I've had the chance to ride the 10 meter and now the 14. I was able to ride it in a light wind day a medium day and then today I got super overpowered so I kind of have ran the gambit I've got my thoughts about me spoiler alert I really like this kite when you do open this up there's not a lot of excess material which is nice sometimes you get a crisp kite you're so stoked you give it a, a big throw open and then plastic blows all over the beach you're chasing it down you've just lost half your session doing a beach cleanup uh, there wasn't any of that the the inside and rear bridle are connected to one another so you will want to make sure to separate those prior to inflating the kite. Um, if you get it pumped up or you're not aware of that, you're gonna be like, what the heck, where do I attach to this rat's nest? No, just make sure to pull them apart. Um, otherwise, you're raring and ready to go. I did use this with the Lynx bar, which I will review in a future video. If I'm remembering correctly the configuration, um, on the outside bridles, it was a knot. It's actually a little plastic ball that you attach the knot to from the lines and then on the inside was loops so if you are using this with a different brand bar and you can do that most of the time as long as it's a four line bar with equal line lengths again basically all of them are and it's a low v distribution most of them are with the exception of duotone and maybe core you can use your other brand bar on this kite just make sure again your bar has loops on the outside and knots on the inside if you do have that issue, you just need to either flip the pigtails or you can pick up a pigtail adapter kit. That's another one of those spare parts that's just nice to have into, in your car so you don't get skunked. You want a bunch of valves, you want a pigtail kit, and probably an extra hose. That's a different video, but this kite's really easy to set up. It's really clean. Just a few quick notes on it. So this Bandit is a Delta C-shaped kite. You can tell when you're looking at it. Uh, it's a bit more closed off. Honestly, all of these three stroke kites look fairly similar to one another these days. Uh, it's got a little bit of a deeper canopy uh, and that allows you to get more of that low end grunt because there's so much canopy for the wind to interact with and then it tapers a little bit in the wing tips. That taper and that C shape is going to give you a faster turning speed, which is nice. This is described as a freestyle big air kite. I think it's also a really fun free ride kite. We've talked about this in previous videos. A lot of free ride kites are starting to push the envelope where they have a lot of freestyle characteristics because riders just like to jump and do tricks and have a lot of fun. And this kite, I think, firmly sits in that category. But again, it is branded Freestyle Big Air. So how does it perform with those categories? I would say exceedingly well. When I was looking at this canopy shape the first few times I used it, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to do for Big Air. And today, when the wind started sneaking up, I was really, really impressed. I was keeping up with the guys, uh, and they're better kiters than me, so that was pretty awesome. It was really lofty. It actually did a fairly good job of floating me. I did find that it's a bit more of an active steerer kite. So by that, when I sent the kite, it wasn't so much that I just pulled in and let it, let it float me, but rather I steered it through the window to generate more power and then I hooked it back right through the window to catch myself where you can loop it through, catch yourself and you have a fancy little transition. Trying all of these different kites, one thing I struggle with is consistency sometimes. Because every kite has different characteristics and turning speeds and just positions in the window, it's sometimes hard to figure out and dial in your landings. I did struggle with this kite a little bit at first, but once I got dialed in, I felt really, really comfortable. That isn't so much a blemish on this kite. It's more of an issue when you ride a lot of different kites, it is hard to transition and progress and give a fair consistent review because everything flies a little bit differently. So my first few jumps, I sent it a little bit too far backwards and then I had to really ratchet it forward and I missed my timing. Once I dialed in, I didn't so much have that issue. I would say this bar pressure is on the medium high side as the kite became more powered it did become heavier bar pressure i had a wetsuit on 
I haven't been doing as much kiting as I would have loved to lately, so maybe my arms are feeling a little weak, but I was getting a little bit fatigued, I'll be honest. I uh, had to go in, stretch them out a little bit. It wasn't anything that was session ending, but this is certainly a kite with more bar pressure than other kites on the market. And I think it does become more pronounced when you have more power in this kite on the higher end of things. On that note, on the higher end of things, this kite definitely has a top end. When you find that kite, when you find that top end, you are overpowered. It's been a while since I've actually lost control, lost an edge and tumbled because I had so much power. That happened today. I had a jump, I kind of overshot. Again, this kite is so lofty. I stayed up way longer than I anticipated. I didn't come down clean. My harness snuck up around me. So I rode back into the beach and with my harness up so high, I just couldn't get the proper leverage and I tumbled. I pushed this thing out. It was still yanking me. I've been kiting long enough to know what to do in that situation, but there are kites where you, you don't quite know when you're at the top end, I knew. I'm like, all right, I need to land this kite and be done with my session or size down. Fortunately, we do have a 10 meter. I didn't use it today. Um, having used that 10 meter in the past, it's a really, really fun kite as well, which is, is nice. I don't always like the same kite in all sizes, right? So if you follow, sometimes I ride a kite in a 12 meter and I get on it in a nine meter and I just don't really like it. The characteristics I don't feel are dialed. This is a kite where on both sizes I had a really good time and my feedback feels fairly similar. Going back to that bar pressure, on the lighter end of things, I did like it because it allowed me to feel where that kite was. And sometimes it feels a little bit like you're cheating. If you don't have a lot of power and then you don't have a lot of bar pressure, it feels like there's nothing in the sky. You're like, where, where's the wind? There is no wind. With a little bit of bar pressure, even if you're not going high, it just feels like there's more power I don't know, that, that mental aspect personally helps me. I like it. Um, and I had a really, really good time on this kite. I'm looking forward to riding it more this season. Uh, I did find that it drove upwind really well. I didn't expect that for a delta shaped kite, but it, it kept pulling me forward. When I was reading about the kite, they talked a lot about its stability. This kite is very stable and how in the gusts, it really surges forward and continues to push you upwind. This guy did a great job driving me upwind. On my underpower day, I still was able to hold my tack line, and today I just traveled upwind with ease. So what are some things I didn't like about it? Again, the higher bar pressure, that's a, that's a toss up for me because I do like kites with a little bit more bar pressure, but you can fatigue easier when you feel it. Also, when you have a lot more power in the kite, there is a lot more feedback in the bar and you do have to be, be careful. On the other hand, that's good. It lets you know it's probably time to size down. Also, I don't necessarily love the inflation system. So this is the reactor inflation system. So it uses a sup valve adapter. These are becoming more common, but it is something that you're probably gonna wanna purchase one or two spares of and have it in your bag. So when you get to the beach, it's not, it's not necessarily a nozzle that people have all of the time. I do believe they include one. Again, I would pick up spare, one spare one in the kite bag, one in the car so you don't get skunked. Regarding the valve itself, it's actually a push button valve. It works really well once you've got it secured correctly. But today, for example, I clicked it once. I felt like I had depressed it and it was locked into place. I pumped the kite up to about seven PSI untwisted it psh, right down to three. Had to go push the spring again. The spring actually went up a little bit and that apparently meant it was locked, reattached, pumped it back up. I've used these valves several times. It's on the Nash kites, it's on the Fly Surfer kites, it's on the F1, it's on SUPS. It always gets me. Maybe I'll do a better job paying attention and try to figure out what the proper position is but it, I, it always tricks me. Like I'm one for two where the kite totally deflates itself. It's kind of annoying. I talked a little bit about this in the reading video as well where they use the max flow. I just wish these guys would standardize and just use the very standard twist on system slingshot Cabrini uses. It's really, really easy. It also simplifies the amount of attachments you need and you don't need to scramble when you realize that your attachment isn't on your hose. Other than that, I think I really like the kite. One general feed, piece of feedback, I guess, regarding the naming system 
is F1, they have the Bandit. Um, maybe this is the Bandit 15. And then they also have the Bandit Surf. I wish maybe they named the Bandit Surf something else because it is a little bit tough to differentiate, just name-wise. Uh, but that's a very minor critique. And I will, be I will be reviewing the Bandit Surf in the near future. I haven't had the chance to use it yet, but I'm pretty excited. It gets a lot of positive feedback. I am looking forward to riding this kite a lot more this summer. Personally, this kite is one that I enjoy riding. It's a really good all-around kite. It relaunches easy. It has good upwind drive. It's boosty. It does tricks really well. It has a little bit of bar feedback. That's everything you need. In my opinion, that's kiteboarding. You just want something that you can get out there, rip around with, play a little bit in the waves, jump, do tricks, have a good time, get your session fill. This checks all the boxes. Guys, this has been Jake. Thanks for checking us out.